Good evening, my little pumpkins. So, a couple of things. First off, I am sick again, or still sick. So, <laughs> this has blown my mind. But having kids will make you, for a period of time, I've talked to a couple of people, and they've all said it passes. But for a period of time, you just get sick a lot. Now, I was never someone who got sick very frequently, but neither was I one of those people who was like, I never get sick. And then they get fucking red Nile fever or whatever that is. So I just got sick once, twice a year, got over it. One of the things actually was quite interesting, as far back as I can remember, anytime I did get sick, I would get over it by within 24 hours. Like the vast majority of the symptoms would be gone within 24 hours, which is always quite interesting. And uh, some of my relations I've noticed are, are like that as well. And obviously immunity is largely related to genetics and lifestyle factor too, of course. But having kids for some reason just makes you sick all the time for longer at a certain period of their, their development. So this is novel for me, for future dads and moms out there, be wary, be ready. And obviously there is, again, like I say, there's current parents watching being like, mm-hmm, yeah. So be that as it may, we have to soldier on. We can't take two months off training. Now, you're like, oh, and you're wearing the Adidas shoes. And yes, so the Luz Ajun's still fantastic. Someone was asking about which best shoe was, because I put up a picture in my story of all the shoes I have, or most of them. And uh, I got these, but I wasn't really doing much weightlifting. So they never really got a major try. Oh, no, they did, but not a lot, not, not a meaningful amount. And I just kind of wanted to try them on tonight. And to be honest, I'm already regretting it. I bought these purely because I wanted them. I bought the Iron Mark trees because I really wanted them. That was the only that's the only answer. Like Karen just asked one, their 997s, their A ninety sixes, eighty sixes, they want their K seventy Corollas, they want whatever. Like gun enthusiasts want their vintage guns. I wanted a pair of these iron works. Did I know if they were a good shoe or not? I'd heard they were a good shoe. They looked like a good shoe. They are, however, the most narrow shoe in the world. And if you watch the Luz Ajun review, you will know that I don't have narrow feet. But these, these take the biscuit. I do, however, love them. White Adidas, I am instantly 10 points more athletic if you're watching this. The Ironwork trees, I've added six inches to my vertical jump, maybe more. It's, it's hard to say. Everyone, no matter how bad you are, no matter how fat you are, no matter how bad and fat you are, no matter how bad and fat and old you are, if you wear white Adidas shoes of any model, you are instantly 10 points more athletic. If you wear white socks and pull them up a little bit, if you can see your ankle, you slot, you are 12 points more athletic. I'm, I'm sure of it. I don't have the money for research yet, but I am currently applying for funding to prove this and bring it to the scientific community at large. So I finally visited my physio, or my, not a physio, finally visited my neuromuscular therapist, NMT, does physical therapy. And as you've heard me talk about, he is the best physical therapist I've ever, ever had the pleasure of seeing. And I've seen him a lot now over the years. He's helped me with a lot of things. And while it is quite a journey, it is well worth it. So one of the things that I knew my elbow needed with soft tissue work. It was one of the first things, or it was one of the first parts of the rehab with Dr. Steph. He said, go get physical therapy. He doesn't love self-physical therapy as much, or he, he kind of, mis not saying outright, but he was, what, from my interpreter from the program, it was like, if you're doing it yourself, folks, in these areas, but everyone knows it's better if you get an experienced person doing it with you. So I got him to look at my hip and my elbow. So I waited for some things to build up, obviously get back from my buck. So both feel a little bit better already. Elbow definitely feels like it's a bit more extension. Now I know it's gonna take a couple of more sessions realistically on top of the rehab I'm already doing to improve. And that be that as me, I will keep going and just keep booking those sessions and make sure I get to them. So like I said, it's for Kevin is his name, KP Therapy, he's, in the west of Ireland, the southwest of Ireland. For anyone in Ireland, he's in Tralee. And for me, it's, it's just over, it's just about a two hour round trip, but it is undoubtedly worth it. So that is done. Uh, I think maybe in 
two sessions time I should see a noticeable difference so some photos taken and we'll see if we can get anywhere so tonight we're doing some snatches to be honest I don't think I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna leave these on for too long because they are so uncomfortable so we'll probably just go back to the loose engines tonight is just straight snatching so the snatching set up at the moment in terms of programming is full snatch from the floor variation and just rotating those rinse and repeat every second session snatching variations are high hang with high pull maybe high pull plus high hang low hang snatches or pause snatches i would like to add in some no foot snatches right now but that would be too long between the variations to see meaningful change so this is enough for now and i don't particularly need low the no foot snatches in fact i don't think it'd be very good right now because I'm not straight enough in the extension and while they can help sometimes no foot snatches can make you swing a bit more because you have to compensate for not moving your feet you cut the pull short and generally you cut the pull short you extend the way you lean back behind the barbell so the pause snatch is what i need so i'm gonna do a little bit of the adidas just to remember how they feel but i'm pretty sure i'm just gonna go straight back to the loose jeune shoes and be that as i may i'm gonna listen to something probably some warhammer lower again which i'm really enjoying i for my warhammer people i don't play the game i used to play the the total war games was it total war did they make those way you know the turn-based chain games like who 20 years ago no 15 16 years ago so i i like warhammer I've been reading the Horace Heresy and I'm like 15 books in and I just, I've just stopped. What? Try to go listen to something like that, maybe. If there's something on Wes Hammer. Wes Hammer is the only person I listen to. So, gonna do that. Might look for some Game of Thrones stuff. I should really listen to music, but yeah. And I'll let you enjoy the ASMR snatching and then we'll move on to our back squats and some pulls and some cardio. See, we start off here in the Addy Power or the Ironwork trees, but very quickly take them off. So I love the look of the shoe. They look fantastic, but oh my God, they are so narrow. So heel is good in them. Heel height is good in them. They're very, very light, but they are like wearing men's dress shoes. So quickly back onto the Luz Aljun shoes, which I'm going to keep wearing for the foreseeable future. I might wear my Nikes in the next session or two just to see how they feel in comparison. They are, the loser, a great shoe. And today's session, we're just focusing on the snatching, just full snatch from the floor. And we're looking for that particular feeling as I work my way into the snatches. So one of the things I've talked about on my Instagram recently was trying to get to 140 in as little sessions as possible. So this is the 13th snatch session in the last couple of weeks since we restarted snatching. And while I could probably do 140 now, I don't really want to do 140 that's super messy. I want to do a beautiful, sharp, powerful 140 where there's clearly room for more. I don't want to yeet up a 140. As fun as that would be, I don't like how that feels. And it does not agree with my training thoughts or philosophies. So while I could probably do 140 right now, we'll work on a max, pretend like I haven't done 140. And if we take 120 for a double, which is the heaviest I've done so far, which I did last week, that kind of puts me at 130, maybe 133 if we're like an efficient lifter, if we're to pretend I don't know that I can do 140 right now. So we're working off that 120 for a double, so probably at 130 so far. So we'll try and realize that maybe the end of next week or maybe sometime next week, and we'll keep playing the game. So I just want to snatch that 140 in as little session as possible, just as a minor goal for myself, as a, a short-term goal, just to put a bit of pressure on, and it keeps me working towards something specific. It's not a life-changing massive goal like 300 was and we don't need any of those goals just right now just even this month we don't need that right now we just need something that i can train towards that puts a tiny bit of pressure but nothing crazy so as i said at this moment the way the snatch training set up is full snatch from the floor and then a snatch variation now did a lot of volume tonight did nine by two in the snatch between 90 and 100 kilos and at the moment i don't really want to go to my working weight until I feel good and then I don't want to go up from the working weight range I've given myself until those sets feel good so you'll see a lot of sets here at 90 kilos where I'm just looking for that particular feeling 
someone asked recently is they said I described that feeling of a snatch you know what it looks like and they're like could I describe that and the answer is no because it's something that takes years to acclimatize to and it's not saying no I won't describe that but no it can't really be put into words because it's the feeling of a movement it's like asking Usain Bolt's how does it feel to run fast? And I'm sure he would say something like just running fast or how does it feel like for Tyson to punch someone? Now, I'm not comparing myself to those, but you get the idea. It's something that only becomes apparent from training experience. And there's no benefit to me explaining to you. Just know that it's something you'll look for, that a good snatch feels a particular way. And you'll get glimpses of that as you move through your training. You'll get glimpses of that as your training progresses and they'll go quickly. And you'll often hear beginners saying, I forgot how to snatch. And that's true. You often just forget because that feeling isn't fully ingrained. Now that feeling isn't a magic feeling that just comes out of nowhere. It's segmented sections of the lift and you're focusing on particular cues and you're doing particular variations that help and you're loading your training appropriately and you're doing strength exercises that are necessary and you're working on that mobility that you need to work on and you're doing it to the best of your ability and you progressively incorporate all those things until you get to a place where that technique is ingrained in you and it's something that is hard to get rid of as opposed to hard to keep so bear in mind do know that it will get better if you stay diligent and you learn the right stuff for your lifting. Now, that said, lots of people learn the wrong stuff and spend years lifting and don't get that feeling, so correct information is still paramount. So focusing on a couple of different things in today's session, the hip height was the big thing I wanted to focus on today or one of the first areas that I wanted to work on because in the 120, it was too, too damn low. So for these, I really wanted to make sure it was hamstrings are just around parallel, are a little bit below parallel and then I want to make sure that my shoulders my back was in this incredibly strong position pulling my chest up as much as possible aiming for extension as much as possible and it was okay it's getting there one of the things it feels like when you're in a really tight position is that you're kind of pulling the slack out of the barbell it's similar to that deadlift but you're not pulling the barbell up it's like your arms are really extended it's like there's a really long tight connection from your hands to your chest because you pull yourself into that really strong position you're loading your legs and you're loading your back really well and it feels kind of like pulling the slack out of a, a deadlift barbell but it's slightly different for that snatch so when you're pulling yourself up and you've maximum tightness in your back and your legs are loaded really well it feels like you're in that instant connection with the barbell before it lifts off the ground then we're focusing on sweeping the barbell back trying to keep my hips back for longer and then extend really straight and doing an okay a job but it could be better i'm not as happy as i would like with them the second rep for most of the hundreds was consistently better but it wasn't good enough. And it is getting better, of course. And it's something I will keep working on. Moving on to the back squats then. So the hip issue you'll hear me talk about in a minute doesn't really affect the snatch. It's just that overhead position, obviously. The difference in external rotation and ex internal rotation from side to side and the elbow extension is something that I need to work on. And I'm working on it as we were talking about. And you can see here there's a slight slant in the barbell on my back. And in my case, that's almost certainly from that difference in external rotation from side to side. So a large discrepancy, we end up with this slightly janky position. Now, it might... Be related to my issue with my hip could the hip have come first and then the external rotation or vice versa who knows it's kind of irrelevant now almost i just need to work on both of those and improve on them and this in my case is the cause of that i do want to caution however that it is very easy to have a different cause for that slanty barbell on the back it's not something that needs to be urgently fixed but do pay attention to if there's a visible slant on your back with the barbell it could be shoulders it could be thoracic it could be hip it could be lower back it could be your foot it could be any number of things causing that it just depends on what it is for your issue so don't rush to your shoulder you can have a look at your shoulders of course if you have that barbell position i know it worries a lot of people and it's definitely something you should pay attention to but it's not something that you should immediately just eliminate all your back squats like pay attention look for the source and once you find that source you'd be surprised at how quickly it might resolve itself it can just take a bit of time and depending on how much of the issue is present so in these just up to 200 kilos for sets of three i really wanted to you know give the hip a little bit of a chance or rather when i say hip i should really say hip flexor and soft tissue work because it's not so much my hip joint it is the soft tissue there so you can see a little bit of a hip shift but 
this is the nature of training. There's always going to be something, but I still love it. Okay, so I'm going to nip it there. Snatches were okay. Could have been faster. So I was looking for a lot of different things, and I'll have to talk to you that over in the voiceover. In the squats, hip flexor is still... So obviously it's not going to be fixed immediately, as we are saying at the start, so I wouldn't expect it to be. But it was good on the snatches, so loosen up a lot with the the soft tissue work and the hip mobility but on those snatch or on the squats by the end of the snatches it was kind of a little bit irritated so currently it's like midway down the IT band midway down the center of the quad is where I'm feeling it most and it's just pretty annoying because it gives you this kind of inhibition before you start the squat so just as I load the hips and the knee extensors or the knee flexors and the the hip flexors my, I, you're like, oh, it's gonna be a bit of pain there. And it's not even, a, it's a very severe pain. It's like five out of 10, six out of 10. And you're like, oh, it's, it's, it's not even a conscious thought. You're just like, oh, pain, okay, do another rep. Okay, it's not too bad. Oh, if you just send your hips back a little bit, it's not gonna be a sore, but that's not correct. I need to be driving the hips forward, knees forward. So it is the, uh, the nature of the game so so have to be really conscious of it and not let it alter technique and get on top of it squats are still feeling very good i would have preferred to have done my kind of 220 for triples and i could do them but i was really not happy with the technique on those 200s and i was hesitant going into the start of the squat so but they isn't 220 last week was the last session was really good and it was 210 week four they're moving really nice so i know it's not an issue so you just have to be super conscious and calm about the situation be rational about it but as usual it is annoying snatches happy with now i kind of need to do some pulls and core but i also have 25 30 minutes of cardiovascular work and it's half nine now and i want to go to bed early a pretty reasonable time so in the grand scheme of things cardio is more important for you at the moment for weight loss you get to health and stuff like that it takes priority and I just need to get it done and I need to make sure I keep getting it done keep that weight loss going or insist that weight loss in a timely fashion keep my conditioning high so snatching nine sets it's good squatting three by three 200 it's fine you know it's it is what it is we'll just keep that squat nice and strong keep getting leaner getting more muscle keep practicing snatch keep adding into jiu-jitsu keep getting faster and i think we'll be in a good spot i need to get back my intro workout nutrition i have slacked off on the intro workouts kind of since i finished 300 i just haven't been you know logistically as serious about training i know if you watch fitz's vlog he was talking about the logistics around training and how he needs to be on point and everything but now i'm like ah okay like there's a couple of supplements alex is recommending to take and he knows that I'm, i just haven't taken them we just haven't been gone to order them or even bother taking them and it's fine there's no issue uh but it's just i need to get back a bit on the intro workout nutrition he has carbs intro workout so there's 75 grams of carbs I don't like having them in your workout for one good reason and I just would prefer to eat them right now I don't think it makes much of a difference and to be honest I would just prefer to eat those carbs 75 grams of carbs is a lot of carbs to be eating and, and I totally get the reasoning why Alex does that but I like the nummies you know so it keeps me happier in terms of one of the goals which is cutting weight if I have 250 grams of carbs throughout the day 275 as opposed to 195 or, or 200 it's a lot less you know that's a big difference and you know most of my workouts aren't that hyper intense in terms of you know if we compare to say what Fitz is doing like he has huge amounts of density of muscular glycogen being used and it's not that I'm not using it during my training sessions. And it's funny, if you, if you meet anyone who's done like across the level of one or any of those S&C certs, they'll teach you all these energy systems and it'll be like, this activity is only this kind of like electric activity. And you're like, you're like it's, <laughs> it's so funny because it's like, what the fuck are you talking about? But 
it's that's not how energy systems work like metabolism is isn't like blah 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 like it's not levels of of adaption now there there can be some distinct regions you know but there's a way more nuance than that but anyway what i'm saying is that i'm not doing as much intense work for example as compared to fits you know he's doing a lot of volume on squats it's all the volume from now and just kind of in general he's not super adapted to squatting he's not in squatting shape and then he has to go run usually he'll run after his session so he's got a lot of high intensity work just a lot of training per minute of training whereas i'm sitting down and resting now i don't rest much between sets and like nine by two satches is a lot of satches but in the scheme of calories burned it's it's not a crazy amount you know three by three squats at 200 is is nothing so with that being said i will add back in the a's and creatine and stuff and um yeah so it's you just need to be conscious of those things but i, I like i said i'm really enjoying training i hope you're enjoying watching these vlogs I know some of you are surely enjoying the snatching and I hope you're enjoying in general just the goings on look I really should be doing the assistance work and I should be doing my single leg work my pulls but I just want to go to bed <laughs> and I'm not even tired but I just want to keep that bed early and yeah get those priorities and again as I can say that conditioning for me right now so I want to be a skinny bitch you know so I'm not going to be a skinny bitch so I'm really looking forward to seeing the progression on the joint mobility especially my elbow that just really give me a newfound appreciation for the trickiness of elbows and returning extension i you know i've gained and lost mobility at all points throughout my career been weight of thing you know something gets tight all the time and you can return it like ankles hips overhead front rack you know thoracic everything gets tight and you can bit of diligence and you can get that back no problem uh, for a vast majority of people even if you're never super mobile before but getting range of motion back in the elbow I have really got a newfound appreciation for the trickiness of that and some interesting stuff I've learned so hopefully we'll see some good range of motion improvement on that and I can wrap up that elbow rehab video but unless I get that extension back there's no point making that video now I know some of you would definitely benefit from Steph's rehab exercises but we you know need a conclusion to the elbow before I can make that video so enjoy this training vlog I hope you're enjoying the training vlogs. I watched Fitz's training vlogs because obviously I'm not there training with him because I'm not going running 5Ks. That's, uh, that's crazy. That's crazy talk. I also need to walk the dogs as well. So, yeah. We better go to bed. Do my cardio. Walk the dogs. Go to bed. Love you guys. Bye-bye.